Alright, I'm going to show you how to test a Mopar gauge. Uh, this cluster is out of a 69B body. Fuel gauge, cooling gauge, they both hook up back in the same. They get 5 volts in, and then there's another lead which goes to the sending unit. So today I'm going to test the fuel gauge on this. If you flip it over, see two prongs. If you follow the trace back, one of the prongs, the one on the left here, goes to the dark blue wire which runs back to the sending unit and the fuel tank. The other is going to be getting 5 volts. <clears throat> Voltage regulator for the cluster goes on back here. I'll show you quickly. This is an uh, electronic version I put together with a 5, uh, five volt limiter. Uh, the pinout, the one on the left is ground, center is 12 volts in, and right is 5 volts regulated power out to the gauges. So if both of your gauges are out, I would look at that little guy right there first and then you can start testing whether the gauge is good or bad. Now to test them, you need a gauge tester. Put this together, there's resistors inside that mimic uh, the sending units. So for the Mopar, uh, full is going to be roughly 10 ohms resistance, empty right around 73.5 and half is 23. So I got resistors in there. We got my switch to switch over to whatever ohm I want to test. Lead to ground, and there's a lead to the sensor or the back of the gauge. So for our fuel gauge, the two pins, this one I know goes to the sensor, so I'm going to take my tester alligator clip on that. Short lead with more alligator clips on it is going to go to my power source. It's going to be the other uh, power source. I uh, essentially use in AA batteries. They're 1.5 volts each. Uh, I got four of them in the sleeve. Uh, sleeve is a piece of 5/8 heater hose, but they fit in there pretty snug, and you can get contact with all of them. It's putting out six volts, so the gauges should show a little bit high. If you want accuracy. Find 5 volt source and use that and you'll see exactly what your gauge is doing. But this is really good to test. So from our power lead wire, that's going to go to positive side of the battery and our negative lead from the tester goes to the negative side. Put this over so you can see. We got our tester set on full. Get them connected and you should start seeing some movement. There goes the gauge. So at least we know the gauge is working. Uh, accuracy in the car is going to depend on how tight your connections are, what kind of condition your wires are. Uh, a lot of things. You might be seeing less voltage up at the, the cluster than what the battery is putting out. You know, it's all resistance, it all adds up, so it'll all make your gauge uh, act act funny. This one I've tested it a couple times and it goes right up to full which on 6 volts eh, I mean the gauge is probably not in the best shape. So that's pretty much it. And if you want to test this on the vehicle with vehicle power source same hookup only you don't need that little power lead just hook your tester up to the sensor output and then ground the other end and you'll be able to see if your gauge is moving or not. If it's not, uh, you might have a break in the system somewhere. I've seen these pins break loose from the actual circuit board so you don't have contact there. Uh, check those and then who knows, your gauge just might be bad. That's it.